Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am super excited to uh, start a new week with everyone. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Command the Week. Um, welcome. I'd like to just say, wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to everyone. Uh, Command the Week by EPR Global. Um, it is good to see you. My name is Adini Kejrobolanewa, and I'm excited as we go and start to make uh, some powerful declarations of God's goodness and God's mercy in our lives. Um, are you looking forward to this week? I sure am. Yep. Yep. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. If you are, give me a thumbs up. Give me a smile. Give me a hoop. We are excited. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, guys. Wow, I see some, some of my ladies must be awake. <laughs> Good to see you on Instagram. Uh, ladies joining us. Good to see you. Ladies joining us on YouTube and on Facebook. Well, this is EPR Global's Command the Week. And this is a platform where we kick off our week powerfully by declaring the word of the Lord. We believe in the efficacy of God's word um, because the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, that's the scripture that we anchor command the week on. It says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's word in his mouth God's word in our mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. When we stand on the word and like God declared the word, the word does not come back to us void. So every week we believe very passionately that we launch into the week speaking God's word, knowing that according to Psalm 147 verse 15, where it says he sends out his command to the earth, his word runs swiftly. His words run swiftly. So we believe that when we speak this word and we declare it, it's going to run the words and we personalize it. It's going to run swiftly to and fro the earth because it's going to bring the reality of what you have spoken. So shall it be. And I'm excited. Today's theme is I am empowered. We've come into, this is the first Monday of the month of April in the second quarter of 2021. We're kicking off this week. We're kicking off this quarter with a powerful statement saying, I am empowered. And I know you're going to see the power of God operating your heart and your life like never before. As is our custom, we believe we should start the week off with praises. What we do in EPR, because we're a global ministry, we have our members joining us right now. I can see on Instagram, on YouTube, joining from Kenya, joining from um, Lagos, Nigeria, joining from London, UK, joining in different states, from different states in the US. So we're really thankful to God um, for what he's doing, uh, how people are listening from different places, different countries. Um, so we're so excited. Not everybody is on live, but so many people are listening in afterwards. And we're super excited that you're here. Um, we kick off the week because this is a, a, a turn of a new working week. We believe strongly that we want God's word and God's praises to lift up its head. The Bible says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting door, that the King of glory may come in. We believe that when we lift up the name of Jesus, when we lift up God's praises, the weak must respond because God is glorified. So the weak opens up. All that, all the treasures that God has for us in that week. So join me as we kick off the first, you know, we have a couple of scriptures. I just want to use to bless the Lord from Ezra chapter 3, verse 11. It says, with praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love towards Israel endures forever. Why don't you personalize that? And just because to say, thank you, Lord. Today is April 5th, 2021. Easter, we're celebrating, you know, this is Easter Monday. We're celebrating the remembrance that our Christ, our King is risen. So we give a great shout. The Bible says, give a great shout, all you people. 
because the foundation of the house of the Lord has been laid. In Christ rising up, the foundation of our lives has been raised. So we thank him. Psalm 95 verse 1 to 3 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Who is your king? Who is your Lord? Who holds you steadfast? Let us come before him with thanksgiving, with praise. Let's lift him up. Let's extol him. For our God is great and is a great king above all the gods. Psalm 107 verse 21 to 22 reminds us, let them give praises to the Lord for his unfailing love. Ladies, like me, I'm sure, just looking at the amazing, reckless love of God for us, that our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, would die for us, would, to reconcile us to God. Oh, we thank you, Lord Almighty. We bring the sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise as we declare your goodness and your works for all eternity. And of course, 2 Chronicles 5.13 tells us that the trumpeters and the musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord to, with their songs, with their cymbals, with their hands, with their clap. As you are awake, whatever part of the world you're in, why don't you lift up your voice and say globally, He is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is merciful. And I know we shall all see the goodness and the mercy of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. As we begin our um, declarations, I want to remind us, you know, of how do we make these declarations? We believe that the words of our mouth that we speak and the words that we write through our comments, through the things we post in the chat, are enforcing the things that we want to see happen. It is a spiritual principle. We, we speak it with our mouth, but because the Bible says we're kings and priests, as, as priests, we speak unto God and the earth hears the words we speak and they make those confessions that we make out of faith. We just don't make them. We believe every word we're declaring. We personalize them. We receive those words. But guess what? Kings make decrees. Kings write. They put laws down. So what we're writing when you hear a word that resonates with you, put it in the chat room, type it. Even if it's later on, it's fine. Put a comment in there. Seal what you have said as a king. Write that decree in the spirit. Or you might be typing it into Instagram chat or typing it on Facebook chat or typing it on YouTube chat. But in the spirit, you are making a decree for your personal life. And so as we go forth with the words for, for the declarations for, for today, for this week, we kick off with John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I love that scripture because it's powerful. So join me as we say, Father, we thank you for Jesus, our risen Lord, who is seated, who has seated us with him in heavenly places. Because Jesus is the word, I declare that I also have access to the power and the life that is in the word. I have access to the power and the life that is in the word. I want to make sure that um, for those on Instagram, you can see me clearly. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So this morning, as we speak these words into being, I want us to begin to say, Father, thank you. Because Jesus is the word. In the word of God is life. In the word of God is power. Every creative ability is in the word. The word of God has the power to make all things new. Therefore, I also have access to this word. So the words that I speak, the declarations that I'm making today, they will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The first part of it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Why did he say that? Because when God speaks about man, he's speaking about male and female. He made man 
and he put them, made them in two species. He says, let them have dominion. I declare, let's begin to make a declaration. I declare that I am created in the image of God. I am not a biological accident. I am not a product of evolution. I am not a product of um, evolution from animals. I am in the image of God. Therefore, I am of the God class. <laughs> Therefore, I am of the God class. How does the God class operate? How does those that are of the God class operate? They operate on a higher level. They operate on the level of creativity. They operate on the level of power. They decree things and it comes to pass. Those that are in the God class exist in two realms. They exist in the spiritual. They exist in the, in the natural. So this morning, as members of the God class, we are decreeing first things that are, that are occurring in the spirit and the earth must bring them to pass because the spirit happens first and then it happens in the physical. Therefore, I declare I am empowered to be fruitful. I am empowered to multiply. I am empowered to subdue. I am empowered to have dominion. As I've said it, so shall it be because I am of the God class. Can I have somebody really just put in there and bring that confirmation? You are of the God class. You are not a regular, you know, a person that just things just happen to. You are designed and created in the image of God. Therefore, this week, I declare that I will excel in every endeavor that I lay my hands upon. This week is the beginning of weeks. This week is the beginning of great weeks. Great weeks of multiple blessings. Great weeks of multiple prosperity. I am empowered to bear much fruit. This isn't going to be a week. This isn't going to be a month. 2021 is not going to be a year that the year will go past and we cannot see what we've achieved. Oh my goodness. This year is going to be a year of multiple achievements, multiple fruits. We're going to bear fruit on multiple levels in the name of Jesus. And the fruits that you will bear begin to decree that it will last. You're not going to do things that will fizzle out. You're not going to start businesses that six months later on, five years later on, it all crumbles. You're going to, in this season of your life, you're going to do and excel in the things you, you that, that pertains to you. You're going to go to the places of prominence. Begin to declare to yourself that whatever I lay my hands upon to do, it will prosper. My life work, it will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 eight. The first part, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. I trust you're personalizing this. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of prison to those that are bound. Hmm. Therefore, I speak forth and I declare, I am anointed and I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit to do my life's work. This scripture that we've just read is what Jesus declared when he was starting his ministry. Jesus didn't just do things nilly-willy. He was direct, he was specific. Although he was God, he came in the form of man and there were prophetic words that had been spoken about him. Even Jesus, when he was going to kick off his ministry, he opened the scriptures and he took the word spoken of him and he started to declare it. He started to speak it. He started to tell everyone, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm empowered to do. This is what my life is about. And everything Jesus declared, he did it. This morning, I want you to begin to speak. I am anointed. Call your name, me, Adenike, I am anointed. I'm anointed to heal the brokenhearted. I am anointed as a weak midwife for many. I am anointed to carry the gospel all over the world. I am empowered by the Holy Spirit to do my life's work. I'm, I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit to achieve God's purpose for my life. This week, I bring light and good news to anyone sitting in darkness. The Bible says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. I speak for that my life will be light to other people. My life will be light to other people. My life will not be insignificant. 
My life will make a difference in the lives of others. My life will touch other people. My life will be used by God to change the story of other people. I am empowered to be light. I am empowered to be a carrier of good news. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. I want us to continue to declare. Call your name. What are you empowered to do? Write down what your life's purpose is. Write down what your mission is. Like Jesus, he spoke that which he was called to. So today I decree, I am empowered by God to bring his liberty and his solution to long-standing problems. Ah, your problem might be, your, your, your assignment might be to bring solution to the lives of children. Your assignment might be to bring solution to those that have physical disabilities or limited or have been pushed or marginalized in society. Your life's assignment might be to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Your life's assignment may be to run a global um, organization with, that would bring glory to God and serve mankind. Whatever it is, God, every time we look at each of our assignment, your assignment must be linked to solving a problem. Hmm. Do you recognize the problem that you've been created to solve? Do you understand what God has put inside of you and empowered you to fix? I want you to begin to declare that I will be used to bring liberty and solution to long-standing problems. I will be used to give the right counsel to challenging problems in the name of Jesus. Oh, at times, if only we know, every one of us will go through seasons in life where we just are trusting God for somebody who God can use to speak, to counsel. I pray that you and I will be that voice this week and beyond in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. 12, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. Remember, remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes activates and operates these different gifts as he chooses for every believer. If we go to the earlier verses of 1 Corinthians 12, you will see the Bible is talking about there are different diversities of, of, of gifts for the same spirit. There are different administrations of the gifts for the same spirit. And then the Bible goes ahead to lay down the different gifts of the Holy Spirit different things that God has empowered us with, different abilities is given to us to do life, the things that we need to do life and to make a difference, God has given to us. The Bible says that it is the spirit who, listen, distributes, activates, operates. In your life, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and empowers you to distribute what is put in you to activate his power in you, to operate, and that the Spirit chooses this for every believer. You see, this word brings comfort to my heart because I realize I don't have to struggle with anybody. I don't have to be in competition with anybody. It doesn't matter if myself and my sister were doing the exact same thing. He says that what he has given to every one of us is custom made for us. So when we say, I am empowered, you must realize you are empowered to do something nobody but you can do. Nobody but you can do it. So this week, let's begin to speak. I am empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill my purpose in life. I have been given everything that pertains to God and to godliness and to life. Therefore, come on now, I boldly step into this new week. April 5th is going down on record as the week that I started to operate on a new realm. I am filled with confidence. I am filled with wisdom. I am filled with understanding to excel in all my endeavors. In the name of Jesus, I am filled with wisdom. I am going out this week with confidence. I know who I am. I am a child of the King. I have been designed and fashioned the way I am. Everything about me, the way I speak, the way I talk, my mannerisms, it's unique to me. I don't have to pretend to be anybody else. I don't have to try and speak beyond what I know how to do because it is the spirit that is operating inside of me. 
oh yes, I believe everybody that we need to continue to develop ourselves. But nothing must intimidate us. Nobody must intimidate us. Nobody's achievement must intimidate us. Nobody's pedigree must intimidate us. Thank God for what everybody has. But you are who you are by the grace of God. And that grace is upon your life and you're going to go out and you're going to do exploits. In your career, you're going to do exploits. In your business, you're going to do exploits. Don't let anybody speak down to your destiny. You are empowered for greatness. Get ready, get ready, get ready in the name of Jesus to go forth. Your time of uplifting is here. I'm excited. Oh, this quarter is going to be an amazing quarter. Get ready. Every single day, it's going to be something big and marvelous coming our way in Jesus' name. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who needs to hear that this new week? He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Therefore, I declare, I am a child of God. Therefore, sin, death, and fear have no hold on me. I am free from every type of condemnation. I am empowered to be an overcomer. It's important that we remind ourselves. Sometimes even our own mistakes try to talk to us and tell us to feel guilty perpetually. No, God doesn't do guilt. Guys, God does not do guilt. God does conviction. God does repentance. God does redemption. God does not do condemnation. The Holy Spirit does not do condemnation. The enemy always tries to suck life out of us when we feel bad about things. No, no condemnation in Christ. We are convicted. We are expected to show the fruits of repentance and we are fully redeemed and restored in God. Therefore, I repeat, I am no longer a slave to fear. Christ did not die. We're celebrating Easter for me to be bound in fear. I am free. I am empowered to be an overcomer. Why? The greater one dwells within me. The greater one dwells within me. I want you to begin to speak into this week, speak into this month, declare it over yourself. When we speak on command the week, please realize that the words are there, you know, but I want you to personalize it. So sometimes when you say I, you can call your spouse, call your children, call your family, call your parents, call your loved ones. We're making this, you know, we make a scripture, but personalize it, declare it over your family. You know, God is a God of family. Even Laban said, my goodness, I realized that my business started to prosper because um, um, Jacob was working for me. The Bible says that what if I found out that everything he was doing was prospering? They didn't know God. These guys were not really serving God. But because they had a child of God in their establishment, they saw that things worked. Because you're a child of God in your family, things have to work. So I want you to begin to speak over your life, over your children, that because the greater one dwells within me, because the greater one dwells within my family, because the greater one dwells within my children, no weapon of the enemy formed against us shall prosper. Every adversary, every mountain, every gate that seeks to withstand me this week and beyond, it will fail for my sake. It will fall for my sake. It will crash for my sake. It will be moved into the sea for my sake. In the name of Jesus, every Thing that seeks to stand to limit me, limit my progress, limit my children, limit my family in the name of Jesus. It is broken, it is destroyed. Why? Because the greater one lives inside of me in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, that's a commandment. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is God's word to us, each and every one of us. He said we're supposed to be ambassadors of the kingdom. What Jesus could do on this earth, he says he's empowered us to do even much more. So are you ready? This new week, I want you to begin to confidently say, I am chosen appointed and approved by the Father 
to reconcile nations to him through the blood of Jesus and the power of his word. Ladies and gentlemen, we are active participants with God. The God of the whole universe is listening to you and I this morning because he's empowering us to commit as we commit to that commandment. I want us to always remember God is on the throne, empowering, supporting, encouraging, breathing upon all of us, saying, go, 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 my daughter. Go, 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 my son. Go forth. Be like I am. Be fruitful. I am chosen. I want us to say that. I am chosen. My family is chosen. Type it down. I am appointed. I want you to write it down. I am approved. Part of my part of God's expectation of me is to reconcile people back to him. Through me, the Lord will work miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Who is ready for this? Through me, the Lord will work miracles, signs, and wonders. <laughs> We're entering into a new realm, guys. Through you, God will heal the sick. I see you. I, I, somebody telling you that there's, you know, it could be through work or it could be a client, it could be a business saying to you that, oh my goodness, I just got some really horrible news. I just heard that, you know, my sister or my brother or somebody else has cancer or they're sick or they've been in an accident. And all of a sudden you would just say, I want to pray for you. It's not going to be to death. Don't worry, they won't die. I'm going to talk to the Lord about this. They will be healed. And to know that, God, I have committed you. Father, let this miracle happen in this family that they may know it is God and God is backing us up. God is backing us up. Let's begin to say, I am chosen. I am appointed. I'm approved by God. God is backing me up. God is backing up my words. These words that we're speaking, they will not come back to him void. When we decree a thing, sisters it will, and brothers, it will not fail. God is backing our words. The time of the church has come. The time of miracle signs and wonders have come. And we are part of it. In Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Yes, thank you. I see people saying I tap into it. Yes, I see the post. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Philippians 4.13 says, I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. I like this translation because most of us know it as, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But I believe this is the passion translation. He says, I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. The power that is available to you is the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. What happened to our Lord Jesus Christ? He rose up. This is Easter. He rose up. Death could not hold him captive. He didn't just rise up. Before he rose up, he went to hell to release those who are captive. When Jesus died, he went to speak and to preach the world, to the word to all mankind who had died before that time. That's why the Bible says he led captivity captive and many rose with him to the heavens. Jesus was doing amazing work through that power. And he says that's the same power that we on the earth right now have. The power that irrespective of what we face, irrespective of the challenges, that it gives us the ability to overcome that we're empowered. This morning, I want you to know that you are infused with the power of God. So let's begin to say, I have divine strength. Oh, la, 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 la. There are some things, ladies, that we're going to be doing. There are some things, men, that you will be doing that people will say, ah, you have gone past your due date. You have gone past the time. Do you still have the strength to do these things? I'm telling you that the power of God is being infused on you this morning on this platform and i'm saying like i'm saying to you i'm saying to myself hi adenike i have divine strength caleb said something he said 40 years ago i saw that this was the land i saw that this was the opportunity i saw that this was the next big thing but the people could not enter into it we had to wander around for 40 years have you been in a situation where things have happened in your life by virtue of other people's errors other people's mistakes 
maybe even our parents, what they should have done, what they should have achieved, or maybe even our own limitations. And it feels as if time went past us. But Caleb, 40 years later, when he was 80 years old, said, I still have the power of a 40-year-old. This mountain I wanted to grab when I was 40 and I couldn't get it. At 80, I'm going for it. Wow. I don't know who this word is for. Your age is irrelevant in this season. God is doing a new thing. Begin to align your words to what God is doing. God has a new and a great future ahead of you. Your age, your limitation, your pedigree cannot stop it. Instead, the power of God is upon us. I have divine strength. I have ability. I have capability. And I even have great wisdom to take on new opportunities that are coming my way. Opportunities that present themselves this week opportunities that present themselves beyond this week. I lay hold on them in the mighty name of Jesus. I have the mental and emotional strength to push back against every challenge, every setback that I'll encounter. When God opens new doors, when opportunities come, problems try to present themselves, limitations try to present themselves. But today I decree I am empowered to press on and press through. I am empowered to press on and press through. How many people have that strength? I want us to push, begin to say, this season, I am going to press on and press through. Something big is coming your way. It's going to look like, whoa, can I handle this? Guess what? You're going to eat it, you know, one bit at a time. When it comes, don't say I can't do it. You're going to press on and press through. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Great and awesome things are coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. This is another one with a different translation. Ephesians 3, 20. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. <laughs> there are some awesome things, awesome ideas that you have. There are some great and amazing things that, that's swelling up inside of you. God is telling you this morning, don't let anything make you think, whoa, can I really do this? Nobody has done this successfully. Only the big players know how to do this. God says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all these things that you want to do. He says, he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Your most unbelievable dream. He will outdo them all. Did you hear that? Your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you, constantly energizes you, constantly energizes you. God is saying that the power that I've put inside of you is a life-giving dynamo. My power in you is constantly energizing you, giving you fresh energy. So you may have been tired, oh my goodness, in March. You may have thought as if you struggled. God is saying, welcome child to April. The power is at work again. The vision is bubbling again. You may have thought, it's taken me a while. I've been saying it. People are like, you've been saying this thing for years. Keep saying it. Keep believing it. Keep giving life to it. Keep energizing it according to the word of God. So join me in declaring, God is the one working in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Therefore, I am confident that my future is secure. Begin to declare it. My family is secure. My finances are secure. My health is secure. My life is secure. My children, they are secure. My loved ones, they are secure. All things that concern me in Christ is secure. No need to be afraid. Nothing missing, nothing broken. The peace of God fills your life. Until you achieve the purpose of God for your life, you ain't going nowhere in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it, until I fulfill God's purpose for my life, I ain't going nowhere. My life is secure in Christ. My future is secure in Christ. My peace is secure in Christ. My health is secure in Christ. Everything about me is secure in Christ. In Jesus' name. John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the helper, Ooh, la la, when I hear this, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. 
The Holy Spirit is our helper. Therefore, I speak forth. I am empowered because the mighty Holy Spirit is my helper. The Spirit of the living God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the maker of the heavens and the earth, says that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that was there when he said, let us make man in our own image, that Spirit, God says, is your helper. Ah, it's time for us to bring out everything we want to do. Everything, you know, can you imagine if you have some, let's say you're moving house from one place to the other, and you have loads of furniture, difficult things, and the remover men come, and they come and they start carrying everything. I mean, things that you you, you can't even push with your finger, they just lift it, move it, lift, move it. And then there are things you're like, what else? Um, the stuff in that place, could you help me put it there? Sure. What else? The stuff over there, could you move it? What else? Um, there's some stuff upstairs, can you move it? And they are going. That's the Holy Spirit, the helper. Anything that you have to do, call upon the helper, call upon him, that you should, we should be excited. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I cannot be stranded. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I receive insight. I receive fresh revelation on what I need to do this week and beyond. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I cannot be confused. Because I have the Holy Spirit, He will give me clarity. This week in my career or my job, the Holy Spirit will help me know what I need to do. This week in my business, in the things I need to do, the Holy Spirit will help me know what I need to do. This week in my education, in my home, whatever I've laid upon my hands, the Holy Spirit will help me know what is to do. He is my helper. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I am never alone. Yes, Lord. Yes, my sister. I am never alone. Call upon me and I will answer you. He will give us clarity. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sisters. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep it coming. I am empowered. I will fulfill purpose in my life. I like that. Somebody said, I am not going anywhere. <laughs> I love that. But he said, I am not going anywhere. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the earth and blew the breath of life into his nostrils. Then man became a living being. Hmm. The breath of God. Those who know me know that I have a testimony about the breath of God. I have seen the breath of God sustain what should be dead by all medical explanations, bring it to life. Therefore, I speak that the breath of God that gives power to come alive is upon me. I declare that anything dead in my life comes back to life in this season in Jesus' name. Oh, because the breath of God is upon me. Everything that is dead in my life comes back. Begin to call it. Begin to say it. What is dead? Every dead business comes to life. Every dead career comes to life. Everything that has caused me to be stagnant, no significant promotion, no major promotion or uplifting, that season is over. My season of uplifting is here. I speak life to my body. Anywhere where there's been sickness in my body, the breath of God brings it to life. Anywhere where my, there's been problems in marriage, the breath of God brings it to life. Anywhere there, where there has been strained relationships, the breath of God brings it to life. The breath of, the breath of God turned Adam. When God created the body for Adam, it was just dead. The way a dead person would just lie down. That's how Adam was at his beginning. Amen. It was the breath of God that filled him. And that breath of God is the power of God. Suddenly things kicked in. Heart started to move. Limbs started to move. Blood was pumping. Brain was functioning. Limbs. All of a sudden, this human being had power coursing through his body. Supernatural power. The breath of God brings supernatural power. Things that have been broken, things that are disjointed, things that are not flowing. Relationships that start one day, they look like they're going somewhere, they stop. The breath of God is infusing fresh fire into your life. God is bringing a newness into you. You are becoming a new man. The breath of God is renewing you. The power of God is overshadowing you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. It says, your anointing has made me strong and mighty. You have empowered my life for triumph by pouring fresh oil over me. You have empowered my life for triumph, not my day. 
You have not empowered April 5th only. You've not empowered April 2021. You have not empowered the year. You said you have empowered my life, the span of my life for triumph. The word there was for triumph, for victory. Therefore, I speak that I am the Lord's anointed. Me, Adenike. Me, Adenike. I am the Lord's anointed. Earth, O oh earth, hear the word of the Lord. I am the Lord's anointed on this earth. I am blessed and I'm highly favored. Because the Lord has exalted my horn, I have good success. My horn can represent anything that I'm doing, my life's assignment, my influence, my capability. My horn is the essence of who I am. The Lord has exalted it and I have good success. I, Adenike, myself and my family and my children, my loved ones, we will be distinguished. We will be celebrated everywhere we go. Our family name will be celebrated. Our children will be celebrated. In school, they'll be celebrated. At home, they'll be celebrated. My family will be celebrated. Because of me, my parents will be celebrated. Because of me, my siblings will be celebrated. Ah, everything I lay my hands upon, it will prosper. Because the oil of God is on my head, because I am the anointed of God, I decree the Lord has positioned me in a place of visibility. Oh my goodness. I want someone to begin to, please write it down, write it down. This one, this is a decree. Decree it. I have been positioned in the place of visibility. I have good success, all round triumph. I have been positioned in a place of visibility. I decree it in Jesus' name. This month, I testify, oh God, I will be seen. I'll be head hunted. I'll be noted. People will come and look for me. They'll be like, I heard you do this. You'll be like, how did you hear about me? I heard your business does this. I heard this is what you do in your career. I heard you do this. Can we invite you to come and speak? Can we invite you to come and say something? Can we give you this contract? Can we give you this project? Can you explore this job? You are the right fit. You are the right candidate. Tell us what it will cost. We will bring you this week, this season, the Lord has positioned me to a place of visibility. The Lord has positioned me to a place of visibility because promotion does not come from the east, from the west, from the south. It comes from God. God has put me in a place of promotion of visibility. My influence, my authority, my power is exalted like a horn. My influence, my authority, my power is exalted like a horn. My influence, my authority, my power is exalted as a horn. As I've decreed it, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Therefore I confess that I am empowered to be a marketplace evangelist. I am empowered to be a marketplace evangelist. I receive the power to be light at work. Wherever you are, your light will shine. You cannot be in obscurity anymore. You are visible. You are visible. You are visible for the kingdom. For the sake of the kingdom, I confess, I decree, you are visible. The wisdom of God on how you will present the gospel rest upon you. Rest upon me in the name of Jesus. I have discernment. Oh, the empowerment of God gives me a spirit of discernment. I know what to do to meet the needs of others. I know what to do to solve the problems of others. The Holy Spirit said that I'll be witnesses to the ends of the earth. My God will make me global. I'll be a global solution provider. I'll be a global content provider. I'll be a global help to people. People will be drawn to the God that I serve. I will be a witness to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. That's who I am. That's who I am. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. This is going to be a powerful week. This is going to be, April is a powerful month. April, May, June, this quarter and the rest of the year. You are about to step into new things. We are not just speaking because we could be sleeping right now. All of us. Maybe some of our sisters a bit forward in their time zone. But I'm sure... A lot of us, percentage of us could be sleeping right now. You've woken up at the first day, working day of the week to declare these things. The earth will carry it and bring it to you. The earth will bring this word and bring the manifestation. From the spiritual, it becomes manifest in the physical. 
Ephesians 3.16 says, I pray that he would unveil within you, unveil within you, the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. I cannot unpack this scripture. If there's ever a time that we should have homework, it is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 in the Passion Translation. We need to go and pray this scripture. It is deep. But for now, we're going to make a declaration and say, I declare that every veil, every covering that is over my heart, over my mind, which limits me in my thinking or limits me from making progress, the power of God removes it right now. The power of God removes it right now. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord will flood me with dynamo power. The spirit of the Lord will flood me with intense power of God. The spirit of the Lord will fill me with explosive power. Somebody is about to explode. Some people will say you are about to blow. Who is on this platform? You are about to blow. Hmm. God says, I am removing the veil of covering. I'm about to let the world see the things I've deposited inside of you. I am flooded with the riches. I am flooded with the glory. Flooded. I am flooded with favor. I am flooded with the might of God. I am flooded with the power of God. It propels me to a new level. It propels me to a new place. I rise above in the name of Jesus. This season, I rise above in the name of Jesus. Your rising is now. Your rising is now. Your rising is now. Oh, this is my time. This is my season. I am rising. The explosive power of God is causing me to, it's causing every veil to be removed. I am rising. I am rising. I am rising. In Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hmm. Post-COVID, there's going to be a lot of running, a lot of moving, a lot of opportunities. God has been doing things in the background to get us all clear, get his children clear. Over this season of COVID, most of us, our vision is clearer, it's all sharpened. And God is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready to go. Oh, I want to speak to say, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. This scripture is powerful. Therefore, I will wait on him in and out of season. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance. Therefore, I will wait on him in and out of season. Why? You see, when, you know, I always use this analogy, and I've used it on command the week. If you, in, in the Yoruba culture, which I belong to, in the Nigerian Yoruba culture, when there's traditional weddings, the husband's family will bring loads of gifts, loads and loads of gifts to the wife's family for the bride. Clothes, food, all sorts of things, jewelry, all sorts, you know. They'll bring it, package it and everything else like that. And the wife is supposed to go and to take one gift as her most preferred gift out of all the gifts the husband has brought. Now, in the contemporary Christian sense, the way they do it is, Within all those gifts, there's always a small, beautifully wrapped Bible. And so as the bride is dancing, they're telling the bride that, come and see all the wealth, you know, because they, they embellish it. Come and see all the wealth that the, the husband's family has brought to show you how valuable and important you are. They've brought loads of this and loads of that. Which one do you want to take? And the person who, they, the woman who coordinates all the affairs, just in case you are not sure, she will whisper into your ear which one you must take. <laughs> like, don't go and embarrass us with this bride. So they will whisper to you, take the Bible, take the Bible. So when the woman gets there and she looks at all the gifts and then she just sees the Bible, she picks the Bible and raises it up. Then everybody will cheer to say, wow, what an amazing woman. She has picked the most, you know, the most important thing. She picked God's word above all the treasures of the world. But the way I look at it is that if you look at it like out of all the treasures, the Bible represents the inheritance. When you say God is my inheritance, there can be so much. When you inherit God, you have everything. 
So if God is our inheritance, we don't run helter-skelter. We wait upon him because that's where our promotion comes. Therefore, let's repeat it again. I will wait on God in season and out of season because God is my inheritance. I receive fresh power because God is my inheritance. I receive fresh power. I receive the grace to go forward because God is your inheritance. The power of God rests upon you. Where you have struggled before, you're trying to do this thing, launch this, do something. You know, you feel as if you're just trying, you're crawling, you make an effort. God says you have entered the season where you begin to walk. You may have been limping, limping. Just, you're not going too far. You know where you are going to, but something holds you. You keep limping. In your business, you've been limping. Your career has been limping. You have a certain level of success. Or you're not where you could be. You feel contained. You feel restricted. You feel there's fire burning in you, but you feel you can't go too far. I've come to prophesy to you that this season you are starting to walk, walking majestically on your two feet. And then as you are walking, you're starting to jog in your enterprise. And then you are running. Oh my goodness, I see some people flying. I see some people flying to a level. And then I see you soaring. You're entering into a glorious place in the mighty name of Jesus. Do not be tired. Do not be weary. God gave us the word, I am empowered, to translate you to a new realm in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 to 13. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 to 13. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. With my righteous right hand. Is it your inheritance? This is why it's our inheritance. When you choose God as your inheritance, God says, God watches you. Over anything you're going through, God will just be looking. What? Who are you going to choose? Who are you going to turn to? Oh, I love something Bishop would say. Um, Bishop Edeko says something that I like. He says, can a man look up with one eye and look down with the other eye? He said, God asked him that question. He says, can you look up with one eye and look down with the other eye? He said, no, I can't. He says, Therefore, if you are looking up to God, you can never be looking to man. Don't ever look to man and think you're looking to God. You cannot look with one eye. So your eyes must either be on God or it's on man. Today we decree our eyes are on you, O oh God, and you will strengthen us. You will promote us. You will lift us in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to decree as we round up. The strength of the Lord empowers me. Therefore, I will not fear. The strength of the Lord empowers me. God says, I will uphold you with my hand. God is strong. God is powerful. God is mighty. My goodness, God is upholding the whole world. If he can uphold the whole world with billions of people in it, he can sort me and you out. The Lord is my guide. Therefore, I will not be afraid. This week, this week, begin to confess it. I will clearly hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me, this is the way to go. Walk in it. This is the way to go. Walk in it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. This is God telling everyone this morning. Get ready, get ready, get ready. You're going into this new season. Go take your possession. Go get your stuff. I've empowered you. I've given you the grace. I've put, I've put strength in your legs. Where your legs were feeble, where they were weary. I have put strength in it for you to walk, to run, to jog. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. I don't know why for the last couple of weeks, but this scripture keeps coming up. Sometimes it's not just a scripture we're just putting in there. God just keeps taking us to it. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord is with you wherever you go. If you go to the right, I am there. If you go to the left, I am there. If you go global, I am there. If you stay local, I am there. Do not be afraid, says the Spirit of the living God. And so we say, the power of God dwells richly within me. The power of God dwells richly within me. Therefore, I am bold as a lion. I am bold as a lion. What is that thing you want to do? You want to go into real estate? You want to start building? You want to buy properties and build? You have the big guys who are doing it. If it's a passion that you have, I don't know who I'm speaking to or why that example came up. Go for it. Believe God. It will open doors to you. Any great organization you see today was a small organization. Hmm. Any great organization you see today started small and it has not finished on the earth. So it's time for your own. 
I completely trust in the finished work of Christ. I am at peace. I am at peace. Today, as we thank God for Easter Monday, it's been a powerful, beautiful week, you know, powerful Easter weekend. I want you to say to yourself, I completely trust in the finished work of Jesus. I am at peace. Repeat to yourself, I am at peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. No shaking anymore. I am at peace. God has finished the work. I'm not going to despair or be afraid. I step into this new week. I step into this new week. It will be a great week. This week, it will be a great week for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as is our custom, we then finish by saying, I testify. I have made my confession by testifying of what the blood of the Lamb has done. Therefore, my confession this morning, April 5th, 2021, becomes flesh and manifests in my life in the name of Jesus. It manifests in my family in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. I am at peace. Yes, that's how we're going to round up today. I am at peace. We thank God for a beautiful Easter weekend. We are kicking off. I am empowered by God. Therefore, I am at peace in the name of Jesus. I just wanted to quickly share something that, you know, with the last three, four weeks thereabout, you know, I've just been hearing just amazing, phenomenal testimonies from ladies who are on Command the Week platform. Um, I know some people have had some good news or great things or victory at work. It might seem like it's a small thing, but you make this confession, it happens. Just want to encourage you. Please share it with us. Share it with us. You can use our Facebook. You can use our social media platforms. You can use our Telegram page. You know, join us, follow us, you know, to share this information. We look forward to, to hearing what God is doing. I'm going to be sharing one of the ones somebody shared with me. I actually didn't see it on time because it came on Instagram, you know. So we shared it in our Saturday meeting, but I thought it was important to share it on Command the Week as well. And it, from, it was from one of our ladies, and I think I saw her on the platform um, from Kenya. You know, and basically just to summarize, because I don't want the system to cut us off. You know, she just said two amazing testimonies. One of the week where we declare that I am favored. That particular week that, I mean, we kept saying there that you will sit in tables of, um, with, with, the, with the high and mighty. God will bring you to sit on high tables. Your, there will be emails with your name going around on it. She said she was making those confessions. And that, do you know that she was invited to speak? at the WHO conference on World Birth Defect Day. She said only two speakers were selected globally. And she runs a foundation and they found her and WHO picked her with another person to speak on that global platform. And then another time she also said that there was a period where we said, you know, one of those command the week, she said she was trusting God for a divine connection and for favor for the people they will work with at no cost for an upcoming awareness campaign. She said she kept putting it by faith. She said all the words, she said all the scriptures. And to God be the glory, that week, God started to bring various key people that were significant. And everything she asked them for, they did it. Everything those organizations she asked them for, they did it. I was so excited and people have shared stuff. I remember one of the ladies, we shared something about our career and about, you know, going out in faith and we put some dates and she reached out and said, that was exactly for me. So please feel free, ping me through our social media platforms, whatever way you can do it. Even put it on YouTube, we'll be in contact and engage with you. But finally, I just want to encourage you. One of the ways in which we are moving our communication right now is through our global platform where we can all see each other and engage. We're a global community of women. So we're going to be, we're using our eprglobal.com. We're building our community membership. If you haven't been on it, why don't you set it up? Go up there, register. There are different membership levels. The basic membership level is a community member. So that's for all of us. Join this community. There are lots of amazing women here. Let's start engaging. Um, and because we're still in a what I call a beta mode, which is going to be having the full-fledged one by next month. But right now we're building small groups in there 
building. One of the things we're looking at doing this month is build groups of women in different things, different passions, different similar business areas. So there's engagement and people are building up and learning from one another. So we're super excited about all the things that God is doing in our midst. So thank you so much. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you. I hope you have a beautiful week up ahead. Please rest well, rest up for those who are going to be going to bed. And for those whose day has started, you are more than a conqueror. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a victorious week. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless.